I was back in New York when the ridiculous vaccine mandate was on oh. and it was only white people in restaurants and me and black people were sat in the curb eating. It was like a new apartment. That's right. And now I'm back in New York and it is back to life. Yeah. And that is restorative. Yeah. It's like an oasis. Yeah. Wherever badness is, goodness will take over and goodness prevails. And New York City today is a testament to that. You know, when, when people say this is a divided country, I really believe that's mostly not true. We have the illusion of some kind of down the middle division. The reality is most Americans understand that a rooster cannot lay an egg, that there are men and there are women, and the, the basics are the basics, and they don't have much of a voice, so you would think that the crazies have taken over enough and that, you know. And that's what I sort of love, is that when the lizard starts to eat its own tail, and that happens all over the place. So in my country, where there is Muslim majorities in Birmingham, say, LGBT can't force their agenda oh, onto three-year-olds very because interesting. Yeah. the Muslim parents have majority, have power, and they will not they will not allow it. They barricade schools. And suddenly I find myself on the same side. But isn't that but it, this is what's so interesting is and this this gets to something that I'm talking about everywhere I go in my speeches, which are increasingly less humorous because this is so oh, serious. Eric. Well, in this case, the book that I've written is called Letter to the American Church, but I talk about the unwillingness of Christians to fight exactly. for what is right. Exactly. And it is an abdication of one's duty before God and one's fellow man to fight for what is right. Muslims have that's one thing where we can agree with them they're willing to stand up for what they believe in and then some and then some they would not let a single child through those school gates until they had that taken off the agenda and in a way that christian parents have never achieved that the ladies that stopped me at 42nd street on my way here today they they two british ladies were like keep doing what you do we don't have your courage but but keep fighting and i, I say some people don't want to be at the pointy end of the spear yeah. but to know that they support you that can be enough. But I think that's one of the one of the great things about where we're arriving at is we got Yunkin into Virginia, right? I'm speaking as if I'm an American. Well, I know I'm yes. a foreigner. Yunkin. And he got in by saying his entire ca campaign platform was parents should have a say in their children's education. We've reached a point of oh, peak know. madness no, where that is enough, though. That, that is enough. As a campaign platform, it's enough to say, hmm. Yeah, parents have yeah. got a view on their kids. What a great thing, actually, that that becomes enough. Well, that's th that's the thing is that uh, there's a there's a famous scripture, Romans eight twenty eight. All things work together for good for those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. Not a shibboleth. All things, including horrible things, eventually can redound to the good. And that's what's happening right now is that the craziness, it's so crazy that a lot of people that were previously sleepwalking along yes. have woken up and said, wait, 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 wait a minute. Yes. Are you, would you dare to say that I have no right in my children's education? Yes. That's crazy. Now I'm activated. Okay, folks, uh, we have just one minute left in this segment. Is that right? Okay, Katie. Um, I've gotten a little off topic here. Oh, well, well that's normal. What were we going to talk about? I have absolutely no idea whatsoever. But let me say one thing quickly. because we've got One minute. We have time. I was in New York when it was first locked down, like on the day that it was locked down, I was here. I was back in New York when the ridiculous vaccine mandate was on oh. and it was only white people in restaurants and me and black people were sat in the curb eating. It was like a new apartment. That's right. And now I'm back in New York and it is back to life. Yeah. And that is restorative. Yeah. It's like an oasis. Yeah. Wherever badness is, goodness will take over and goodness prevails. And New York City today is a testament to that. Oh, absolutely. And I, t I tell people, we have a Socrates in the City event November 1st. I wish, so wish you were here I for that. I wish I was here. But David Berlinski, oh, he is. Is he as good as me? Oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, if you know, uh, uh, we'll talk uh, about him off air, but uh, you can't even imagine. No, you can't imagine. What? David Berlinski, uh, November 1st. But, but people actually inquire. They say, are there vaccine mandates? Oh, Can we say? And I think, are you kidding me? Like that's that's done. It's over. And uh, the only thing is, you could get stabbed. But you know what? That happens. The you know what I'm saying? Glorious. You can't. The no, it's wonderful. Glorious. It's wonderful. It, it actually is wonderful. And I shouldn't even joke about that, folks. No. We'll be right back talking to Katie. Yep. What's your name, dear? Hopkins. Hopkins. Whenever people come on this program, I ask them without fail. I ask them. 
do you have a good golf cart story? <laughs> Inevitably, their answer is no. <laughs> but today, I asked Katie Hopkins, and it seems that she does. Katie, what is your golf cart story? If you haven't got, and, and let's just be clear, they're not called golf carts. They're called golf buggies. Oh. Yeah. In England, they're buggies. Buggies. And if you haven't got a good golf buggy story, I mean, who even are you? What's, what's, I mean. Why are you on the planet? I know. So, and will, will your listeners know about the largest retirement community on the face of the planet, which is in Orlando, called the Villages? Yes. Whenever I hear that, it's, it sounds like a 1970s dystopian. Thing. Yes. The Villages. It is sort of. It's like you could see it's, it's going to be either... Uh, children uh, <laughs> that with 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 laser eyes or something, but it sounds scary. Yes. the villages. Yes, and so if you imagine instead of like AI, eighty-year-olds working on automated intelligence yeah. on golf buggies that are yeah. controlled by someone else, that would be the sort of reality. So it's the largest retirement community on the face of the planet, and it's tripling in size over the next few years because everybody wants to live there. Because it's in Florida, and because it's the governor is DeSantis. And so. everybody gets there, and it's so much fun. And I love going there. So I have quite a little crowd there now that turn out when I go there. I have a golf buggy hire man who gets me my golf buggy. I know the hotel dudes there. They look after me. So anyway, I'm in my little golf Wait, cart. wait, wait. Do you mean to tell me that the golf cart or buggy is used as general transportation? Oh. That they don't have actual Wait a like, minute. You know, cars driving okay, around. Seeing, Is that the I'm, idea? I'm seeing I need to I need to bring yeah. the listeners yeah. with. The only way of getting around right. really yeah. is a golf cart. An electric golf cart. But they have golf carts that they soup up. So they have them like as if they look like a plane. Some of them look like a, a fancy, like old-fashioned, old-time vehicle. Oh, Some look like a Maserati. I didn't, I didn't know this. And they go twice the speed of sound. Like they wow. fly. So these old dudes are like, we have not got time to waste. We may not wake up tomorrow. Therefore, we must drive like a bat out of heck. Heck. A bat in out our, of Gehenna. Yes. And Sheol, so that's what they do. as it were. And then me, as an English lady... I'm on my golf buggy trying to, like, A, keep up with them, not get in their way because they're fierce. And there's a whole system. There's GPS Old to get you around it. Old people can be nasty. Yeah. So yeah. I've got my golf buggy. I'm driving around the villages. <laughs> and I'm doing all the wrong things. I'm going the wrong way. I'm on the main road that's supposed to only be for cars, but I'm on it with my cart because I've got a muddle buddle. I went into an event thing I was doing, and someone came out and put a sign on my affixed a sign to my golf buggy window, this big the sign, not small. Forgive me, I'm British. You're lucky I'm on the right side of the road. Is that not the cheekiest thing you ever did? That's hear? pretty cheeky. I Some know. of these oldsters, man. Cool. Um, I tell you. So I was doing the opener for DeSantis when I was there. You were doing what? The opener. I was the I was Are the warm kidding? up act for DeSantis. Wow. Which I would offer to be in real life every dang day. You know something? This is a family program, Katie. He's a hotty hotty boom boom. Out. But here's what's interesting to me is that DeSantis, this is the madness in which we're now living, is that all you have to do is be normal and you're a hero. My so wife and I ran an event about a year and a half ago. DeSantis spoke. I've not met him, but he spoke and he said in Florida. We're going to make sure that only young women in high schools are competing against other young women. Uh, in, uh, and people cheered and we cheered. And I looked at my wife and I said, do you believe that we are cheering? <laughs> this is like saying we're going to make sure that one plus one equals two only in Florida. And people cheered because that's how crazy it is. Exactly. And that's the kind of the Yunkin point earlier is you have someone standing right. there saying very basic things right. like we're going to try and make it so that only people who live here get the advantages of living here. People cheer. And that's where we've well, got to. You called it the lizard swallowing its own tail. We would say the snake swallowing its own tail. Right. But it's, it's an image. It's actually on the cover of my most recent book is the image of the snake swallowing what's, its own tail. What's your most recent book called, Eric? Well, actually, it's the, it's the, the book before the, the new book. Okay, but we don't need called, the detail. Let's go with the name. It's called Is Atheism Dead? And the idea is that when you're dealing with this thing we like to call reality, if you are not, you're making me very conscious of my, my own American accent, reality. <laughs> reality. Reality. <laughs> reality. It's okay. It's a beautiful thing what you've yeah, done to the English reality. language, reality. really. Thank you. Thank you. It's beautiful. But when, when, when you're dealing... I love that we don't even bother with what, the consonants. When you're dealing with what we call reality, um, 
eventually, if you if you are not in line with reality, you destroy yourself. You, <laughs> the snake swallows its own tail. And that's what happens when you take any of these preposterous theories to their logical reductio ad absurdum. Oh, very you, nice. Very, when you very do nice. that, you, be, you see that they're not self-sustaining, that they're self-destroying. And every one of these things that we're talking about, um, you know, the idea that there are not two sexes or two genders, it eventually, well, what's going to happen? We're going to destroy the Olympics. There oh, will you be know. no Olympics. You know. There will be no college sports, sports. for women. At what point does somebody say, yeah. okay, this is not acceptable? Yeah, no. And I think that's, you know, seeing DeSantis, watching him in a room, watching him, watching people be thrilled. Not, not, not because they've got a politician there or a celebrity or whatever, just people be thrilled. They've got someone fighting for them. And I love it. Well, this is the thing. And, and I have to say, I take my hat off to DeSantis for, for letting you open for him because most politicians would say, no, 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 Katie is a little too radioactive. The fact that he is willing to have you do that, just as I'm obviously thrilled to have you on this program, it says something about him because there are a lot of people that they would agree with us on many things, but they still are a little self preserving mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's called being a coward. And uh, cowards are thrown into the lake of fire. It's in the last few, it's the last page of the scripture. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it is my great misfortune to have as my guest one Katie Hopkins. Katie, you, uh, listen, you claim to be, you know, dyed in the wool British, and yet you're unfamiliar with the film uh, starring Sir Alec Guinness called Kind Hearts and Coronets. You're I think, unfamiliar. I think I'm too young, aren't These I? These are, well, I'm just not as old as did you. you. Like, have you heard, for example, of. Uh, Prime Minister Disraeli. I think that may be before your time, Katie, and yet you've heard of Disraeli. The thing is that there are these things called black and white films. They were produced by Ealing Studios, most of them starring Alec Guinness, and they are the most brilliant comedies ever made. And this is my gift to you. You need to watch these films. because Oh, they are so amazing. I thought being in your presence was well, that's, your that's, gift yeah. Yeah, to Yeah, now me. that you mention it. Yeah. But... but uh, Ealing Studios in the 50s, they made all these films with, with Alec Guinness. And I really want to discuss them with you, but you, you're not familiar I don't with them. know, but so you So the next time you Mark come on this be. program, you need to be prepared. I need to be prepared. Prepared. prepared to but, have watched but, black and white movies. But they, are, but they are just such great films. Alec Guinness is so funny. In any event, uh, I want to ask you, usually <laughs> when somebody comes on the program and people who listen to the program, they know that there's not a guest that comes on the program and I don't ask them, do you have an anecdote involving spirit airlines? <laughs> Many of them do. Katie, do you have an anecdote? Oh, well, now you come to mention it, yeah. Mr. Metaxas. Yeah. I love the fact that you're beating yourself up for being silly today. Well, I'm it's often silly, but you've really, uh, you've helped me. Uh, it's disconcerting for you, isn't it? You've got to give yourself no. a talking to I'm in the mirror. I'm worried that, that my audience will just tune out. They said, Eric, enough. Enough. Katie's funny. You need to shut up. But you, Katie, <laughs> were going to tell us about Spirit, Spirit Airlines. Airlines. Yes, but actually your audience always have a choice. You can't always please everybody. And actually people choose to listen to you because they love you. And they'll love you if you're silly and they'll love you if you're serious. I'm feeling quite puffed up now. There we are. Thank you. So Spirit Airlines, I didn't know. This is like why I say Americans are a bit weird. There's some things I didn't know about America. Like? Yeah. I didn't know there was a thing called Motel 6. Yeah. And when I went to Flagstaff in Arizona. It's pronounced Flagstaff. I was... Flagstaff. 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 And there was also a place called, what I would say, Prescott. But you would say yeah. brisket. No, we'd say... No, you don't. You say brisket. They say you make it... They've got to brisket. rhyme it with brisket. Well, you say Thames, so shut up. Brisket. I was in... Flagstaff. And... I was I was there with the Republican Party, and they put me in a Motel Six. That's extraordinary that they would do that. And I'm not fancy, as we know. Yeah. 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 But where I come from, on the farms, we have these glue mats, and if when we have a rat problem, oh, I know, we throw the glue mats down, right. and the rats right. stand right. on the glue, right. and they die. Yeah. That is essentially what it is like being in a Motel Six on the carpet. I, oh. I feared I was stuck there for life. Oh, no. My little feet were stuck. But I have to say, I'm quite surprised that they would put you up at a Motel 6. <sighs> That's what they I thought I really of am me. surprised. 
You said I'm a little radioactive. They obviously thought that'll do for we'll her. Stick in the water. No, that's very strange. Anyway, that then you have something called a Spirit Airline. Well, I've never flown Spirit Airlines because uh, I don't like those things. I mean, actually, there are people maybe who there's a reason to. No, but I, I there's never no no. So I did. Because I didn't realize either. Mm. And they are quite the something. I think they're called Spirit Airlines because it's the closest to the spirit version of yourself you're ever going to get to in life. Wow. Like, it is life and death. It's a, it's a hair Right, seatbelts are like an extra. Yeah, they're like, you pay extra. Like, you pay extra for your luggage or your baggage. Yeah. You're paying extra for a seatbelt. Like, you're paying extra. If, if you make it, you've done really well. Right. It's vile. So I, I've never flown Spirit Airlines, so tell us what... what it's all I mean, plastic seating, and in the, in the manner that you can have a, in, a, in a nightclub, I don't know if you've ever been to a nightclub, mm, where yeah. they have plastic so that they can literally hose the whole place down in the morning. That's what Spirit Airlines have. They are, it's plastic, so they can literally take a hose to it and hose it down. Because the clientele ne- it is, is, is such... A, is a little sticky. Yeah, Ooh, wow. it needs a hose down. And, and it's just there's a whole lot of things going on with spirit. I didn't know that that was a thing, but I won't be going back there. I, uh, yes. And now that I've heard this, I know that I will never fly spirit. It, it's, it is interesting. Um, there, America has some downsides, <laughs> but every good thing has, has no, a No, America, look. Well, it's the greatest country in the world, it's but, the but it's going to have, you know. And, and this is kind of my main message, look, it's. We may be, you may, Americans may be a bit weird, and you may have done strange things to the English language, but America is still, American people are unlike any other people on the planet. And listen, the key is, you and I have hope. For example, so hope. Maloney, <laughs> Italy. Huh? Come on. I mean, is that amazing? She quoted a, G.K. Chesterton. The fact that she's called Maloney. I mean, is there a better name? Mamma mia. Then she stands up and she says, I'm a straight, white, Catholic proud Italian, which is like an opening I use when I'm doing my talks. And then the fact that she's so powerful and, she, and when you listen to her speak and you watch the people in the squares with their Italian flags, and it, it's even if you're listening to it in Italian, or at least you should be, yeah. it's, it, it's emotionally overwhelming. And in Sweden too, Swedish Democrats. I'm not aware of we're this. We're killing it. There's something good happening yes, in Sweden. Yes, Sweden, a great coalition of strong right wing, but it doesn't matter what side, just proud Swedish nationalist individuals right. are now in charge. But, but that's the point is that things had to get this bad oh, yes. for these people finally to say, yes. we need to speak up. Yes. And even though the media did their normal campaign of yeah. extreme right, far right, Mussolini, blah, 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 yeah, yeah. They, they prevailed. Well, honestly, Meloni uh, is just listening to her speak Italian, no matter uh, what she's saying, it's beautiful. But then when it's translated, it's almost inconceivable to me that Europeans are, some of them, getting these kinds of choices. This is, this is exciting. It's really exciting. And with the Italian voting system, it's different to your voting system or mine. It's proportional representation. Mm-hmm. So not only is there Meloni and her party, yeah. but it's made up of a little coalition of similarly minded People. So Matteo Salvini, he was the guy that was before her. Mm. He's part of her group. So she's backed up by these other strong parties. It's very exciting. This this is very exciting. It is. Katie, thank you. We're thank out you. of time. Okay. I want to tell people the book is called Help, an LP album. Help. <laughs> and uh, katiesarms.com, the web. <laughs> Thank site you. katiesarms.com yes. katie we love you Aww. it's a joy to have you thank you and uh we but and and at the same time we're glad you're finally going home <laughs> to be with your family I would be with lovely mark and uh yeah well, oh, well thank to be you and thank you dear thank you to america for having me here